Now, before we dive into programming itself, I'd like to quickly talk about what kind of programming language Kotlin actually is and why you should be one of the first people to really learn it. So first and foremost, Kotlin is a Java-based language and in fact, it also runs on the Java virtual machine. And what that does for us is it lets our applications run on every operating system out there, which is also one of the main advantages of Java. So every application we're gonna write is easily portable to every operating system out there. And you can also see that we can use Kotlin to write Android applications, which has to do with the fact that Kotlin and Java go really well together. So that's what they mean by 100% interoperable. And specifically, we can also use Kotlin to write web applications. But of course, as with any other modern programming language, we can basically write any application we like. It basically just depends on how good a developer we are. Now, why did I say you should be one of the first people to actually learn Kotlin? Well, in fact, Kotlin has only recently been released in version 1 beta. And it is actually developed by this company named JetBrains, which also create the IDE IntelliJ, which we're going to be using later, and which is basically the best Java IDE out there at the moment. And what that means is that you have great tool support for Kotlin, and also that there's a big company behind it, so it's actually really reliable and it's not gonna just disappear tomorrow. Which is actually a concern with some of the other newer programming languages. So later we're also gonna download this IDE, and in fact this is also the IDE which is used by Google for the Android development. So it's gonna be fun using it. Now let's get back to Kotlin itself. Now as I said, Kotlin is based on Java, and one of its main advantages is that you can use the whole Java library right inside your Kotlin code. And you could also integrate Kotlin into any existing Java projects you may have. In fact, JetBrains even has a converter that just converts your Java files to equivalent Kotlin files and also the other way around. So there's really low risk involved in just testing out Kotlin in some of your existing Java projects you may have. But now it doesn't just end there. Kotlin actually improves on some of the more annoying um, sides of Java. So first of all, it's more concise. In Java, you sometimes have to write lots of boilerplate code, which is not really contributing to your application, but just clutters your code. So for example, you might have some classes which basically just hold some data, and you have to define 10 getters and setters, you have to define equals, hash code, to string, and all that, which is really just boilerplate code. So we'll be talking about data classes and other cool features of Kotlin later in this course. Now another major advantage of Kotlin is that it makes our code much safer. Most importantly, Kotlin does a really good job um, at avoiding null pointer exceptions completely which if you've been programming Java before is a really big deal because that's the most frequently occurring type of exception. And of course, we're gonna talk about null safety as well in this course. Now we've already talked about the fact that we can also use Kotlin to write Android applications or web applications and that it is completely interoperable with Java so that we can just use all the existing Java libraries right from within our Kotlin code. And just to give you an idea of what the code looks like, you can actually look at it here on their website. And if you've never done any programming before and you don't really know what's going on here, don't worry. We're going to talk about all the language constructs you have to know and you'll be able to read code like this easily and also write it yourself, of course. Now to give you a broad picture, if you've done some programming before, Kotlin is an object-oriented language, just like Java is. So we're also going to talk about object orientation in this course, which is one of the most important things you have to know for software development today. But Kotlin also provides lots of functional concepts we're going to talk about, like map and filter functions, first order functions, and those kinds of concepts. So yeah, this was just a broad overview of what you're going to learn in this course. And there's one last thing I'd like to mention, and that is, um, as I've told you, Kotlin has only recently been released in its version 1.0 beta. So some of the language constructs and concepts are still subject to change. So you may come across a lecture in this course that is outdated because of some language change. And if that is the case, please let me know in the discussions right away and I will update the lecture. So if anything I present in the lecture isn't working for you, 
please just let me know in the discussions and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Generally, if you have any suggestions for this course or any questions you want to ask, just tell me in the discussions and I'll get back to you. Alright, so that's it for this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.